sure everybody's on right now. You can always watch this in a replay. I thought I would just hop on for a few seconds. My phone is really far away from me, so I can't see your comments if you're on here, but for anyone who is watching live, hello. Please let me know you're on here. Hashtag replay, whatever. Um, I'm just gonna be icing this is an eight inch round. As you can see, I, I bake two tall layers of cake, like two cake pans worth. And then I tort them, so I just cut them in half into four thin layers. And then I put my filling, which in this case is just buttercream, in between those torted layers. So I just wanted to show you a quick, smooth finish on this. Right now, I'm just basically getting it covered. I'm not trying to make it smooth. I want it to be somewhat even. I hope you can hear me over the turntable. I do want it to be somewhat even, but I'm not worried about it being smooth. But I'll always do the top first. And you kind of want to push it a little bit to the edge where it kind of overhangs a little bit, just like that. And I'm using an angled cake spatula. And I'm actually using the back of that. I, this angled part will keep your fingers from getting the icing. That's why I like it. So then I'm going to pile more on the back of my spatula to do the sides. And I want the top of this, when I, I'm going to hold it like this. So this part of the icing to touch where I have gone over the edge on the top. And I'm not going to thin it out. Like I'm going to keep it really thick like that because you don't want your um, cake spatula to touch the cake at all because it will pull on it. It will mess it up. It'll get crumbled. It'll get crumbs in your icing. It'll be disgusting and look bad. So keep it thick because you're going to take a scraper and you're going to go back and you're going to take a lot of this back off when you're smoothing it. So don't feel like it's too much icing yet. And you're going to do that all the way around. But every time I'm going to add icing, you'll see, I add it to where there's already some icing, like the edge of the of the part that I did before, instead of directly to the cake. But I'm never touching the cake with my spatula. Again, just keep smoothing it out. And again, I shouldn't say smooth. It's not really smoothing. It's just moving it around the cake somewhat evenly. Again, I added it where there was already icing. And I'm just kind of pushing it. If I see it starts to pull or I'm getting too close, I stop. And again, see it start to pull right there, so I'm going to just put some icing over it and not pull any more in that area. And when you first start doing this, you're never going to get this perfectly even. It's going to be really high up here. Like, Thicker up here, thinner down here, that's okay. You can fix that with your smoother and your scraper. Again, here we go again. Almost done. So it's pretty much covered, not evenly, but it's covered. So I'm going to go back, because I see down here at the base, I tend to add less icing down here at the base. I don't know why, I don't pile enough on the tip. So I go back, I just put some on the tip, and I just add it where it's needed. Especially if you see any spots that are almost see-through, like you can see the cake behind it, you know there's not enough icing there. So I continue with this cake spatula, and I'm just going around a little bit, again, checking for any odd spots, any thin areas, any clumpy areas. And when you do this, you can kind of feel just by the pressure, like where it's heavier maybe on one area and not on the other. So now you've got to deal with this top because it's everywhere up here. Again, this won't be perfect, but it'll help. You're going to take the back side of your spatula and you're going to use that top edge to bring it right about where you want the edge to be and pull towards the center. And all that goes back off into your icing bucket. And that's another reason you don't want crumbs on here because you don't want to be putting crumbs from your cake spatula back into your icing bucket. And even if you had another bowl or bucket here to scrape the crumbs into, then you've lost all that icing 
because there's crumbs in it and you can no longer use it on anything, even though it tastes still really good. So this helps you minimize waste and keeps the crumbs out of your icing. And so you're just gonna do this all the way around. And so there's a part where I'll probably need more right here. That's okay. At this point, I'm just dragging it in. Anywhere there's big clumps. All right, so now that I've got the big sections drug in, I'm gonna go back around this top edge, make sure there's no little air pockets. I can see a little bit of cake here with little holes where it didn't quite meet up and smooth that out. And I'm gonna go back again because I just created a few more tall areas. Again, this is not level or smooth. This is just getting the icing on the cake. Now, before I get my scraper to really smooth this out, I'm gonna take my spatula again, just the end, and I'm gonna clean my board up here. I'm just gonna drag it across to clean it up. All right, so you're done with that utensil. So now, there are several different scrapers for any of you who've ever watched some of my videos. Sometimes I use plastic, sometimes I use acrylic, sometimes I use metal. I learned to do this with a metal scraper and I'll show you one of those. Excuse the noise. Okay, so this is what I learned with. And this is just a bench scraper, you call it. Um, sometimes you can buy the ones that, when you buy a cutting board, they're meant to clean your cutting board off. It's the perfect cake scraper. You would just pull like this. So there's one option. Another option is just a simple plastic, and there's the minor orange, but they have every color. These actually are from King Arthur Flour, which is a very popular brand of flour if any of you have ever done any kind of baking. Um, you can order them off their website. They're really, really good. The only time these aren't gonna be good is if you're doing like one of those taller cakes, these aren't quite tall enough, or if you're doing a large sheet cake, it's so short that it doesn't really get enough area. But if you're just doing a general cake, I use these a lot. But my favorite are these. These are made by Cake Safe. It's just a clear acrylic. It's got kind of an edge, an angled edge on one side, and they're really tall. So see, I could do a really tall cake, or if I'm doing a really large sheet cake, I can cover a lot of surface with that one scrape. But anyway, it's made by Cake Save. Cake Save makes a lot of different things. They help, they have all these different tools and cake plates that help you level your cakes out. But the, this scraper, and they make different sizes, is the best. I want to say this is eight inch maybe? I don't know. But there's different ones. You can get on there and look around. And if you go to, on Amazon, I have a sweet shop page on Amazon where I have links to my sev several of my favorite products, and this is actually on there. Okay, so before this sets up anymore, I'm talking too much. You want to scrape this pretty much as soon as you get done icing it because you don't want it to get a crust or dry at all or it won't be smooth. So you're going to take the, the angled side, okay, has a nice sharp edge. You're going to want that. And you're going to place the bottom of it against your board. And I put a little bit of pressure there to keep my hand steady. And then put it against the icing. You don't want to dig in, but you do want it against the icing. And you're going to pull towards you with your left hand because I'm right-handed. I'm just going to move the turntable. I'm not moving this spatula, or I mean the uh, scraper hardly at all. Occasionally I'll move it a little bit, but mainly it's the turntable doing the spinning. So, I just kind of, you see how it's building up, and I go all the way around once, which is for an eight inch round. If you were doing like a 14 inch round, you may have to do this twice because it builds up so much. That's all that extra icing that you don't need anymore. And you're gonna make sure to scrape that back off into your bowl or bucket, so you have a nice clean edge again. And you're gonna keep doing that until it looks nice and smooth. All right, so now, once I do that, it's very obvious to me where I need more icing. So if you'll notice, and I don't know how much you all can see, but there are like spot. I mean, it's, I need to smooth it out, obviously, but also there's like dead areas where I didn't have enough. That's where that little strike is. So again, build up around the edge, fill that gap in, and then I'll scrape again. It doesn't take much to fill the gap in. I'm just gonna try to even that out. Go back with my scraper. Okay, 
Now I need to work on this top edge, see where it's a little thin here. So I'm going to grab that same spatula, build up on the edge just like I did before, and I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to build up again. I know it seems like you're going back and forth doing the same thing over and over, and you are, but sometimes that's what it takes. So I'm just going to build right here, pull that excess off, and over here there's a spot, pull that off. All right, now let me see what I can do with that. Again, my sharp edge. good. Always have to kind of get level to see. There's a few little like holes which are just usually caused by air bubbles and that's an, that's one of the things if you start making your own icing you want to be careful not to over mix your icing and not to mix it on a quick speed. You want to do it on the lowest setting of your mixer with a paddle attachment not a whisk because that adds more air bubbles and creates more holes in your icing when you go to do this. It takes that much longer to smooth it out. So even though it's going to be a little stiffer because it's not whipped icing, it makes for a better completed cake. So once I have the sides fairly smooth, like pretty much like I'm going to keep them, I'm going to fix the top now. I'm going to go back with my acrylic scraper and I'm going to do similar fashion to, a, to what I did with the cake spatula before. I'm going to take my edge and pull to the center. And again, scrape that excess off. And this is going to be a tear cake. The top doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because that's another cake on top of it, but you still want it to be level. annoys me so bad to this day is I'll sit here and look at the top of this and be like that looks level and then I'll get down eye level with it and I'm like oh gosh it's not so make sure you look at it from every angle because you are getting a different angle than I am so you could very well see right now it's lost by an eye on that because I'm looking at it from the top so smooth it out the best you can and then you have to kind of spin it around and keep checking things out and then if you're making a tiered cake like I'm going to be I'm actually going to get a small level that I just bought at Home Depot and make sure so I'm going to eye here. I've got a low spot over here. So again, back to the cake spatula. I'm just going to fill that little part in. It doesn't take much when it's slightly off like that. I'm going to just level that out. And of course, a lot of these techniques depend on what kind of icing you're using. Um, there's so many different kinds of buttercream out there that yours may be totally different. Or one that you decide to start making may not work this exact way. And that's okay. It's trial and error. It's figuring out what works best for your icing, what you like your cake to look like. So, this is the small level I was telling you about. Perfect to go on top of a cake. And I'm going to check it here. Pretty good. We're okay. Yeah. And I'll use it again before I stack the cake, but I always kind of check it at this point. So now I'm going to grab a Viva paper towel, which is non textured, like there's no design on it. It's their signature cloth. Don't get Viva also makes like a multi surface. Don't get that. You don't want to see any pattern on your paper towel. So, and there are two sides. You want to use the smoother side, the softer side. And I always start on the top. I lay it on the top. I use the back of my hand first because it's a little bit of heat and it helps to smooth the icing out. I'm not going to push hard, but I am going to put a little bit of pressure and just quickly move my hand back and forth. You basically want to touch the entire top of the cake through the paper towel, of course, not with your bare hand. This is going to smooth out a lot of those imperfections. Now, it's not going to smooth out a big clump of icing, 
but all those little air bubbles that you can't get out or any little streaks or lines, it will take a lot of those out. So I'm gonna continue to do that, especially on the edge where I always feel like it's hard to get those off. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the sides. You're gonna hold it against the buttercream and just move your hand up and down. Take off all those lines. And then just stick your finger and take off what I just did. Okay, this is a good learning opportunity. I just brought my hand over and hit the cake with my thumb. So, again, beautiful Vita paper towel. So I'm gonna push that back into place on the top. And then I'm going to fix it on the side. You can't even tell. It's beautiful. And so when I make a wedding delivery, I always bring these paper towels with me in case I stick my finger in it as I'm transporting it or putting it on top of the cake table or stacking it or adding flowers or whatever it is that I have to do with that delivery. There are so many opportunities to stick your finger in the cake or drop something on the cake. And, you know, and if it's small, like a fingerprint, you can smooth it back out with one of these paper towels. All right, so I think I've got most of my lines out. So then I'm gonna go back again, do the same thing, but I'm gonna use a smoother. This is a fondant smoother. Um, why they call them fondant smoother? Should I use them for buttercream? I don't know, but when you're doing a fondant covered cake, you do have to use these a lot to really get all the air bubbles out of your fondant and to make sure it's really encased over the cake and doesn't have a lot of gas. So, but I like to use it to give me a crisp edge because my hand obviously is not perfectly flat. So, same thing. And on the sides, same thing. You're going to go up and down, back and forth. And just go and do this again all the way around. And you can use this on, you can do the same technique on colored icing. You don't it doesn't have to be just white buttercream. I use this on pretty much every cake I do unless it is a textured cake that doesn't need to be smooth, obviously. But if it's smooth in any way, shape, or form, no matter the size, I always do this. I always apply the cake, cake spatula smoother, or I mean a scraper, then smoother every time. Okay, I feel like it looks good. So then I take my, the same paper towel, just so there's not a lot of waste, that I use to smooth it all out. And I'm going to clean out my cake board because you'll get, you know, like a dried icing on that. I just lay it on top and press my thumb against the cake board and get all that extra icing off. In most cakes, you go back and do some sort of border or something, but this will clean your board up so that when they get it, there's not like icing streaks or crumbles of icing, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So that is how you ice a basic cake with basic buttercream, smooth icing. Because this is gonna be a tiered cake, I will go out, back in and add some dowels. But while I've got you all on here, I'm gonna check and I'm gonna come closer to you so it's gonna be nice and close up so I can see who's on here. Let's see. Hey, Terry and Sarah, what up? Hey, Melissa. See, Melissa, I know you have interest in cake decorating. You could totally do this. Uh, Julie, hello. Carla, hey. Hey Mikey, what's up? Michelle, let's see. Do you ever do classes, Courtney? Um, before COVID I did. <laughs> um, so I'm glad you brought it up though because I've been thinking about how am I gonna do another class? I had three I think before COVID and then I had two more scheduled out and I had to cancel them. So I am trying, fingers crossed, to get one together for September. It would be probably the middle of September. I'm gonna to talk to the uh, the place where I had them last time. It's at a brewery downtown, Lexington, and they have a big warehouse they let me use. And so I'll check with them if they're available, if the rules allow for like certain numbers of people, whatever, then yes, I do want to, because I know a lot of people had to cancel because I had to cancel those classes and people have been asking. And I tried to do a few things on Zoom at the beginning of quarantine. And they were okay, but it's just you can't get as much done. But yes, I, I do want to do more classes. So look for that on my Facebook page. I will post about that. Um, thanks, Mikey. Yes. Thank you, Courtney. Tara, Kimberly. 
and Courtney, oh, see, I'm learning techniques and basic skills. Courtney, okay. Yes, so the classes that I did before, you brought, I brought everybody their own cake. I brought everything. I, everyone had their own turntable, their own spatula, cake board, a bucket of a small container of icing, their own cake, and I stood in the front of the class and iced and decorated the same cake that you all were doing like with you to show you as we went along. So I bring everything for you. You don't have to bake anything. You don't have to make icing. You don't have to do anything. Um, because it's easier for me to teach you if you're using the same things that I'm using, the same icing, the same style of cake, all those things. So if the cake's a little smaller than this one, it's a six inch round is what I bring to the class. Um, my, I, what I will tell you that I'm going to change about the classes was the, the ones that I had before quarantine, what I noticed most of the ladies were struggling with was the thickness of the icing. Because I've been doing this so long, I make it pretty thick because it sets up faster. It makes it faster for me to decorate and to stack the cake. But I couldn't always use this thick of icing when I first started. I didn't have the hand strength or the arm strength back then. So what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to thin it out a little bit for the classes and make it a little thinner because a lot of the ladies had a lot of trouble with it pulling on the cake and cake crumbs and the whole nine yards. But yes, I'll bring it all with me. We will ice the cake together and we will decorate the cake. Last time we did, we did one class where we did some buttercream roses. We did one class where we did just a lot of different sprinkles, like attach them to the sides of the cake. That's a, a big technique right now. Um, I would like to do a drip cake in a class. I think that would be really fun, the ganache drip that everybody loves. But it's the basic stuff. We don't do a lot of fun, in, but you can. So like most of the people that signed up for before quarantine just wanted like your basic buttercream cake with some flowers handwriting, leaves, that kind of stuff. Um, but I would be open to doing more detailed ones. Like if you wanted to learn how to make fondant applications that you attach to the cake, like a bow, or a fondant rose, or any cutouts of fondant, or anything like that. Because um, I do a lot of those, especially on kids' cakes, because they want all the different colors and the, the different pieces from whatever show or movie or cartoon that they're really into. And so I can make all those ahead of time and then attach them to the cake and they're nice and dry and they hold shape much better than buttercream. So, yes, keep an eye on the Facebook page and I will be posting when I am going to have in-person classes here in town. Like I said, hopefully middle of September. Um, but yeah, so it's with everything being kind of limited and it's just a little bit hard, but I think that we could pull it off um, if we had, you know, 10 people or less. And, and before, my class was maxed out at 12 people, so with me it was 13. But I usually had someone hit there to help me, so it's, you're at 14. So I'd probably make the class a little smaller, but I still think we can make it work. Um, so yeah, check out my page um, every couple days and see what I'm posting on there. I try to do lives now and again because I know a lot of people do want to learn more. I also have a YouTube channel. If you have not checked it out, look up the Sweet Shop by Beth on YouTube. I have tons of cake videos on there. I even have just regular recipe videos on there, like all kinds of stuff. And during quarantine, I made like a bunch of videos. So there's a ton of videos on there from beginner stuff to more detailed stuff. I even have decorative cookie videos on there. So definitely check those out. Um, but also message me if there's something that you all um, specifically want to learn. Um, I'll try to either make a video or maybe do a live if I'm already doing it that day or that week. It's hard to say what I'll be able to do on Fridays. My life is pretty crazy. I'm in here till around anywhere from midnight to three o'clock in the morning, depending on how many cakes I have. So I don't get on here every Friday. It's it's too busy. So anyway, but I just wanted to make sure that I got on here today and said hi to you all. And I'm sorry I'm not doing more videos and more Zoom classes, but I just got so bombarded with cake orders. And now all my weddings from the spring are happening not all but a lot of them are happening even though the weddings are generally a little smaller than normally would be they are still happening so my weekends are full of cake deliveries for the wedding cakes and stuff so it's a little busier than I was um, in March and April but anyway so look forward to seeing you all in a class hopefully in September keep checking out the Facebook page for any video lives um, I know that you all have probably been seeing me post some stuff about do you want to learn how to cake decorate and little quotes or little um, posts like that, that is for anyone who, who is interested in actually doing this like I'm doing, whether, and I don't mean you have to do it on this level, you don't have to do 15 cakes a week, but if you are looking to learn how to be a cake decorator and work out of your home and eventually get to the bigger, fancier cakes, I would love to talk to you. I am doing that. I'm actually working with people 
not even locally, like people that live in different states that want to do it because it's all about knowing how to set up and not bombarding yourself. And so that's what those posts are mostly about. Um, if you are local and you want to learn about that, obviously we can meet in person and talk more about that. Um, but if you're wanting to learn the basic skills, I would definitely direct you to my YouTube channel to watch any of my live videos on here, but still message me or email me with questions if you have those. And hopefully I'll be able to do a class in September. But I've got to get back to work. I've got another, I've got to finish this cake and then I have another wedding cake and then I have two more cakes and then I have a cupcake order, I think. So I have a busy night. But thanks for joining me. It was great to, great to see you all. I hope you could actually see what I was doing with the light in here. I wasn't sure how much you could actually see. But feel free to watch this on the replay and slow it down so you can see the different cake tools. Check out the Sweet Shop by Beth on Amazon to see what those the links for the tools that I used today. And I'll catch you later. Bye.